One of the questions we get all, asked all the time is, can curiosity be learned? Can it be learned? See, forever, everybody's equated curiosity with IQ. And when you start to really dig into this, what you find is those are two inter, or, or they're not interrelated, they're independent things. Curiosity is a good predictor of IQ levels at a young age. But as we mature as adults, IQ becomes more fixed in us, um, but curiosity can move and it can change. So with the right environment, we can nurture curiosity. And when you really start to study this, what you see is this, there's two types of curiosity that are out there. There's the immediate gratification curiosity, what we call diversive curiosity. That's the Google effect, if you will. And when we want to know something, we immediately grab our phones, punch in that, we get the quick answer, and we move on. It was a nice to know, but it doesn't really build a different kind of behavior inside of us. The type of curiosity that is behavioral is what we call epistemic curiosity. And epistemic curiosity is something that can be uh, grown in individuals. Uh, to learn to become more curious, you have to exercise your curiosity muscle, if you will. So when we put effort against it, we start to see the world a little differently. Well, what does that sound like in an adult professional? It sounds like, hey, I read an article yesterday, and you know, I start to think immediately, what's the implications of this change in business on the people that I deal with every day? And we start to just dig deeper, think deeper, and move in a little closer than other people as well. So why is this important to, to business? And it doesn't matter what business you're in. Well, what we see is we have a little bit of a curiosity epidemic on our hands. And when you really start to dig into organizations and, and research the numbers behind this, they're actually quite uh, alarming, if you will. Why? Because most people don't even believe that they have environments in the workplace that create curiosity. And it doesn't matter if you're uh, more educated or less educated in business, if we don't create the right environment, we automatically start to shut people's curiosity muscle down. See, when you look into business, you know, 22% of the people will tell you that we don't even practice curiosity at work. I'm not allowed to, right? Or I don't have the environment that does it as well. Um, and, and why is that important? Because as Janet mentioned earlier, it's curiosity that we believe is the precursor to everything, to everything. So environmental, what do we mean by environmental? Well, environmental is do we create the space and time in organizations for people to ask questions? Do we create the ability for them to have a safe environment to dig a little deeper? In every meeting that we schedule that's a 60 minute meeting and we're at the 59th minute or we're at 62 minutes and we go over and we never create the space for them limits their curiosity. Every time somebody raises their hand in a meeting, right, and we said, oh, there goes Jane again, she's asking that same question that she always asks, right, we start to stifle curiosity. And based on the body language uh, leaders actually send their people, they can either encourage curiosity or they can stifle it as well. What do we mean? Well, we've all been in those meetings when somebody raises their hand or asks a question or they try to dig a little deeper, and the leader in the room goes, <sighs> It's that action that causes a different kind of reaction as well.